Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Robert Stickle. I'm also joined by my colleagues Jim Patterson and Jose Levy. Jim and Jose will be today's presenters and discuss the topic of achieving more with business architecture and strategic portfolio management. This webinar is a new addition to our series of strategic portfolio management webinars, so if you enjoy this video, feel free to watch the others we have available on our channel and look towards the next installment, which we'll be releasing soon. And as always, I hope that today's presentation grants you some insight into the world of project and portfolio management and gets you excited for the new developments happening within the industry and here at OnePlan. Thank you again. I'll now turn the presentation over to Jim. Thank you, Robert, and welcome, everybody. Um, we're excited to bring you this topic today. Um, there is an evolution going on in the area of portfolio management. We've done some things on strategic portfolio management, but the whole idea of business architecture and enterprise architecture is really dimensions that people need to factor in in this modern age in order to stay abreast of where things are going and all the complex interactions that have to be factored in as we do our portfolio management. So let's get started. Now, strategic portfolio management, as defined by Gartner, you know, has your strategies and your outcomes uh, at the top that should drive what we're doing in an organization, should be the kind of the, the guiding light as to the things that we should be working on to help achieve where the organization wants to go. And to do those things, we may have different portfolios. There may be, you know, information technology portfolios and assets that we have that are available to us or things that we have to consider when we do our uh, uh, initiatives within our organization. And the uh, enterprise PMO has the portfolio of the projects and initiatives that need to be worked on to help support those strategies as well. And the things that we deliver on or as an organization, you know, could be varied. You know, there could be digital products that we're doing. There's applications and assets that are in that asset realm. You know, the products and services that our projects are supporting, maybe programs that projects and initiatives are contributing to and the individual projects themselves. So there's a lot of different components to this that need to be factored in. And it doesn't matter what method you're using, whether it's you know, an agile or a DevOps type of approach, whether it's traditional project and program management, or it's just product development and, um, and, and that type of process or you know, product lifecycle management that you're doing. They all feed and should contribute to uh, the overall strategy and outcomes that the organization is looking for. Now, strategy execution requires connection to that enterprise architecture and those assets and the business architecture. So when you think about the enterprise architecture of the things that are included in there, like the applications and the business capabilities and all the things that you have in there, they you know, need to be factored in along with strategy to determine what projects we should be working on when we have some trade-offs on which projects to prioritize when and what's first. The ability to deliver on those things and the dependencies we have in those areas are going to factor into our decisions if we do this correctly. So we can't just look at a list of projects, you know, determine based on personality or favoritism which projects should go, or maybe not even strictly on a simple prioritization score. There's other factors to bring into bear to determine what it is that we want to accomplish. Now, you know, one of the organizations that does this is on, from a Netflix organizational chart in business versus business architecture. The corporate structure or an organizational chart is sometimes the way we've looked at the way our, you know, our businesses are organized. When in essence, you know, we need to move more from that organizational chart perspective, more to our businesses modeled around value streams and capabilities, you know, and those value streams and those capabilities are going to drive you know, how we fund things, how we prioritize things, and how we determine what needs to be done in order to succeed with those things. Um, and to make that move, we generally would ideally want to start with the business architecture aspect of that. Now, when we talk about business architecture, um, there's been surveys done. And in those survey results, it shows that we have a lot of room to grow. If we think about the organizations that are doing these things, like strategy execution, business and IT alignment, and the things that are doing business decision-making, technology-based decision-making, project and portfolio management, if we look at the percentages of folks that are using these things, um, there's so much room to growth because they're just being adopted. And the Gardner Group, for example, is saying, 
these strategic portfolio management aspects that include enterprise architecture and business architecture are not replacing what we've been doing over the years with project and portfolio management. It really is additive. It's enhancing. It's really making us uh, more complete in the data sets that we're, that we're looking at, the decision points that we're using in order to make our decisions and our selections. And it really is an evolution of where we've been, not our total replacement of where we've been. Now, those of you that are more agile oriented and doing more enterprise, uh, enterprise agile, you know, Safe 5 for Lean Enterprises uh, incorporates this concept. If you look at what's highlighted at the top, the concept of operational value streams is part of what's prescribed in Safe 5 uh, for Lean Enterprises. It is integral, whether or not you're doing more waterfall approaches or maybe you're doing more scaled agile approaches. It's applicable across the board, regardless of how you deliver things. Now, from a business architecture perspective, and from a value stream perspective, you know, as you look at how this goes, if we think about in terms of operational value streams or what a, you know, what a business actually delivers, you know, we're talking about attract customer, quick rate, quick rate quote, complete loan applications and those capabilities that we need to have in order to succeed as a business, those in and of themselves is a value stream that we need to um, uh, deliver on and actually get better at if we're going to improve as an organization. When we look down at the yellow level, these are solutions that are part of those value streams. So, for example, in order to succeed, you know, at the quick rate quote and the complete loan application, we need to make sure that our loan origination system is evolved or enhanced to support where we're going in that operational value stream. And down below, if we look in the gray, these are development value streams. So as we look at the evolution or the development of this loan origination system, the value stream of the things that we need to provide on an ongoing continuous basis towards this loan origination system would uh, be down here at this development value stream. So um, the above is what you really need to be modeling and evolving over time. And as you're starting in this, you know, you may start on a more abstract basis, but it evolves and matures over time. Now, there are established frameworks for building these models. You know, from an, um, an enterprise architecture perspective, there's been established frameworks like TOGAF. Um, and if you look at that in node B, the business architecture is a component of that enterprise architecture framework. And then on the business architect side, notice that as you look at the details that as we you know kind of drill into the overall business architecture there's a number of components that we would factor into the overall uh, or elements that we factor into the overall business architecture um you know in that you primarily want to focus on the core of the four things in the yellow there's capabilities there's the organization there's the information and then there's the value streams now you know, we can evolve to be more all-encompassing in this, but if we focus on these things uh, as we build this framework, it's a good place for us to start. Now, if we look at business architecture from a more macro perspective, we look at moving from the current state enterprise model over to the future state enterprise model. Um, we have all these uh, different components that are here, you know, initiative investment analysis, shift to customer centric business model, merger and acquisition analysis, new product rollout. Every scenario that we get into here uh, should be connected to a strategy or an objective and a key result. It should be uh, connected and uh, to an investment portfolio, you know, which in includes as a, you know, like a project investment portfolio or initiatives. It should be connected and aligned with a capability and a value stream. And it should also be connected with a technology solution, especially in a digital age where everything is dependent on solutions and applications to help us drive and execute and succeed at what we're endeavoring to do. Now, you know, an, an analysis was made um, that the business architecture is really the Google Maps of an organization. It really defines, you know, who we are. It basically gets us aligned in the 
and, and the same vision of who we are and what we are and what we're striving to be. And it allows us to have anyone in any part of the organization, if this is communicated well to the organization, to understand how they contribute to the overall success of how that organization is modeled and the strategies that we have brought to bear. Now, one plan that we're here to talk about today actually provides the solution to embody this as a central hub uh, of information for these aspects. You know, um, the strategic portfolio management that incorporates these different elements has a strategy component where business leaders have to define and execute on a strategy for the overall organization. The execution leaders, which include the portfolio managers and the PMOs or the EPMOs, have uh, portfolios of projects that they need to actually execute on and align with those strategies in order to help leadership fulfill on those strategies. And to be successful, we cannot ignore the other components uh, in that enterprise architecture or business architecture. We have to focus on maturing and evolving our, um, uh, our capabilities as a business. We need to update and evolve our applications and our technology in order to support that. And we also need to support the success of our ongoing things like value streams and you know, even align them with the products that, that we're trying to deliver if we're uh, delivering products to the marketplace. So in this need for strategic alignment, we talked about this being an evolution of what we do with project and portfolio management, but the need for strategic alignment, let's just take this from a start with an overall strategy or a business objective. Let's say leadership's goal was to grow revenue by 15%. Um, to do that, we might have to have, or we should have to have, tangible key results that in that execution of that plan tells us that we're actually making progress towards achieving that objective. And those are aligned with those objectives, those key results are. Now, those key results, in order to achieve those, they have a dependency or a reliance or an association with, in the enterprise architecture realm, uh, a business capability. In this case, it's order processing. We have to have sufficient order processing in order to be able to grow that revenue and to accommodate that and be able to deliver on that. Now, to do that, we have to have applications, and those applications need to be um, uh, updated or made sure that they can support what we want to do in the next wave of order processing capability in order to be able to do this successfully. And if you take this to the next level, the projects and initiatives that we work on need to be aligned with those as well. So these things are all interrelated as a business. Now, beyond just saying, hey, these are associated, all these things are factored in to say, to do those objectives and do them well, and to succeed at those, we need to make sure all these other things are in alignment and addressed. Otherwise, we can have an Achilles heel through this process that may not let us achieve that objective. So one plan provides the capabilities to where we can actually model and execute on a strategic plan. We have the ability to capture and identify the elements of your enterprise architecture, you know, the products, the organizations, the applications, the business capabilities, et cetera. And we also have the project portfolio that can align with all these things. So as we're working on these things, we understand what we are supporting. Uh, as we're choosing projects, understanding what things might apply to supporting a strategy and what may not, and should we even be doing those things. So to have a comprehensive hub of that information in one plan can be very beneficial to an organization and not having misses uh, in these areas. So from a strategic portfolio management and business architecture, we need to ensure that projects are aligned with your strategy, and they're approved by IT and your enterprise architecture, once again, making sure that we are in alignment as part of our process. Uh, we need to define capability based on strategic, uh, define capability based strategic planning. Uh, that means we have initiatives defined based on improving organizational capabilities, having us get better so that we can achieve goals and we can basically move forward. We need to be able to align our strategic execution to value streams. And then we have OKRs or objectives and key results and value stream flow metrics in order to help us see, are we succeeding at this? Are we progressing the way we had hoped? And then we have to map our projects to applications because we are so readily in this digital age dependent upon those um, and making sure that we're doing those things that we're spending in the correct areas and that we're actually considering 
those types of things and the complexities and the changes that might be involved. And then we have to analyze if projects invest in the right areas of IT. Is our spending aligned to, you know, to the enterprise architecture's future target state? So enterprise architecture, as they're evolving and trying to build up that infrastructure and those set of assets for the organization, um, are we in alignment with where the organization is going on that front? So like anything else, there's visuals that we have in reporting and other things that um, help us derive a capability-based investment approach. You know, so we can determine which capabilities and application improvements do we invest in? And does the spending align with our priorities? You know, being able to get visuals and reporting on the capabilities and show capabilities in multiple dimensions. In this particular chart is the value added versus the strategic value. You know, the sweet spot being in the upper right and how many of the things that we are working on from an initiative basis actually are in that sweet spot or are we working on things that we maybe shouldn't? You know, what are the strategic value? What's the importance in the funding that's required? You know, the size of the, of the nodes there in that chart would indicate the amount of funding that there is in the size of the effort. And to model business capabilities, that's really about understanding and you know, your operating model and communicating it internally like we talked about earlier on. If we model that and people understand uh, from top to bottom and across horizontally across the organization, it ensures we have a common understanding and we can see the interdependencies and put the right resources to work on the right things from our purviews and from our contributions to achieving the overall strategies and capabilities that we want as an organization. Now, one plan also helps you visualize these things. For example, as we model out these different components and, and relate them to one another, we may need to see how our capabilities relate to the products. So for example, we have a capability, in this case, that relates to an application, three applications, which in turn relate to products. So these interrelations need to be factored in. On a project runway, we might capture it all. For example, the projects may be related to objectives and key results, which in turn, those products are also uh, those projects are also related to products, applications, and, and business capabilities. So those complex inter interrelations can be visualized and help us uh, conceptualize and make decisions based upon what we see, as opposed to trying to um, let's just say picture that together in our minds based upon the things we're seeing in pure data. We even have reports on variations of these things to show these interrelations to help us in our decision making to help us ensure that we're staying on course and that we're doing the right things. Now, you know, one plan has the capability as a central hub, but also one plan can connect to your existing applications. So if there's other applications that feed any of your other portfolios, whether it be your project portfolio, whether it be your enterprise architecture and portfolios that are in there, whether it be your strategic portfolio, uh, we have uh, a productized connector platform called OneConnect. It allows you to bring in data from other software development tools, financial systems, service management tools, and maybe more most applicable here today is the idea of it, uh, tying off to enterprise architecture tools that you may already have or repositories of data you may already have so we can leverage what you own. The same things hold if people are using other tools for strategy execution as well. We can leverage what you have, but bring it all together into a central hub into one plan so we can factor in all these dimensions. And I guess the last part on this, as far as one plan, it is built for the Microsoft Cloud, meaning uh, we authenticate the same way your Office 365 does using your Azure Active Directory, so you're in full control of that. But you can use it in the, in the browser just very simply, your favorite browser. But we also can surface it through Power Apps because we have a, a fused experience within Power Apps. We can use it in Teams because we're an authorized Microsoft Teams application. We can actually look at it in things like Azure DevOps as people are doing software development. You can actually leverage the one plan capabilities while you're in Azure DevOps, not just share data, but actually use it while you're in Azure DevOps. And the same holds true with things like Dynamics and with SharePoint. The key is you have um, user experience options in here. Once again, the browser is fine, but the idea here is that there's flexibility in this Microsoft platform. So with that, I thought I'd transition over to Jose Levy who will give us a demonstration of some of these things in action in one plan. Thank you, Jim. Okay, so I'm in one plan and to summarize what Jim has presented, 
the strategic portfolio management approach, which really has you know three use cases, uh, it tells us that we have to focus on strategy execution, and I'm showing here within one plan how we represent that. Um, in and this is basically um, as a as an executive stakeholder, I can come in and see my dashboards and every different what we call these are areas within one plan, and I'm going to show how we address the the SPM areas and then specifically the business architecture, enterprise architecture component. Because one plan is really the central place where you're going to be able to uh, integrate all of this information, no matter from whatever system you might be um, using, if you're using a specific application for uh, the component of SPM, or you can manage directly in one plan because all of these objectives, this objective portfolio that I'm looking at here is actually coming from uh, the objectives that I've registered directly within one plan. Uh, so um, you can use one plan to manage them, or you can bring them in from uh, another another solution. And you know we do have the ability to have specific forms that can capture the uh, metadata associated with uh, with an objective. Uh, but really, the point is that this is one of the pillars of strategic portfolio management that uh, gives us the ability to manage our objectives and, and key results and demands that we actually do alignment uh, to our um, initiatives, um, which um, we'll, we'll show in a second. But you can see we have here uh, different ways of looking at our, um, our objectives and uh, you know, based on how we're delivering against um, um, you know, that plan that's been defined objective and key results. So the second element is the one that's fairly common and you know everyone um, that has done portfolio management is familiar with is basically having your portfolio inventory and focusing on delivery, focusing on very specific uh, metrics of um, and timeline and really frameworks depending on whether you're using waterfall or, or, or agile methods or hybrid and using different tools which is something that one plan um, facilitates you know depending where you're doing the delivery or doing the project directly within one plan one plan has a um a, a robust uh, work plan scheduling capability so you could do it directly in one plan you don't necessarily need to do it in an external system but this this dimension which is you know more for a epmo gives you all the capabilities to do your portfolio summary you can see here um and we'll get back to this in a second um uh, when we uh, bring the business architecture enterprise architecture story but again this is all all of the uh, you know epmo delivery capability uh, it does have by the way also a set of reports um, for executive stakeholders where you can um, go up and down every one of the elements to see you know what's happening within your portfolio so for that uh, executive stakeholder reporting is there the third component is you know enterprise architecture that's the one where we're we're right now uh we've highlighted that becomes a common language for transformation if you will because uh it is the way that we're going to model uh the organization um and how we deliver value and how we invest we invest in capabilities um we build products that uh, deliver value to our customers and um you know solutions and products are um are part of the enablers of of the value stream um, and of our capabilities. So, and you know, it, if we go down to a, a lower level within our enterprise architecture, again, we have uh, uh, technology, data, and infrastructure, so that our applications are being shown here um, in terms of what we're managing. Now, we recognize that organizations might have an existing uh, enterprise architecture repository. If you do not, we can. We have one and we can link to um, any really that are in the market through our uh, integration platform. But we do recognize that when it comes to actually establishing the relationships with um, your enterprise architecture model, um, you know, current uh, reference architecture and feature state, you might have uh, a solution that actually uh, addresses this already. And again, we 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 have um we have one that we recommend, but we can actually um uh, integrate with any other um enterprise architecture tool in, in the market and you know i don't want to 
go too deep into um, you know what we do here, but essentially we're trying to drive visualizations and relationships. And again, this is uh, you know common within um, enterprise architecture repositories. Uh, and here I'm looking at applications and projects. And again, this is the perspective strictly of enterprise architecture. And your enterprise architects, like I said, will have um, this is their solution. Um, but the important uh, concept is that we need to actually understand. Um, all of this, all of these relationships when we're making decisions about the projects that we're going to execute. So at the very least, we need to bring all of this uh, information uh, into one plan uh, in order to make decisions on it. So that's that third element. And again, we represent it uh, directly within um, a, a specific area called uh, My Enterprise Architecture. And uh, you can capture you know, uh, all of the specific metadata for, um, in this case, uh, a value stream. What are the associated applications? What are the capabilities that I'm impacting? What are the initiatives uh, that are also uh, associated with um, with this um, uh, with this value stream? Uh, and likewise, more importantly, when we're talking about applications, um, we can have we can capture all the attributes. And again, if you're not um, using an enterprise architecture repository, you can start with one plan. Otherwise, um, we will integrate uh, all of these data elements from wherever um, you know you're actually you're actually uh, managing your enterprise architecture. And so we have the three elements. How do they they come to play? And what you're trying to do is really to you know navigate through, understand performance in the case of uh, your objectives and key results. And you know, if I was to look at you know launch a, a new product successfully, I can come here and uh, quickly look at what are the what are the associated key results um, that are going to impact that, and from there uh, drill down into what would be uh, you know all the different associations. We do have a new. If you want it to be at this level, at the at the highest level, we could be looking at. Okay, how, how does, um, in, in this case, we're talking about uh, dependencies and we are we can get fairly uh, detailed in terms of looking at the entire map of relationships between uh, this specific objective, um, the key results, the projects or epics, all the way down to applications and capabilities. So we can see here that launch new products success successfully actually has an impact uh, through a, a project to this application uh, CRM 3.2. So let's keep that in mind as we, um, um, we we go later into our analysis. And the projects and epics here, this is our focus la launching new products. We have these uh, projects or epics that are actually um, uh, associated with, uh, with a key result. I could go into one Specifically, and this is interesting. This is, means that it's an analyzing. I actually am not executing it yet. This is um, a uh, an epic. So I, I want to take a look at this when I look at my portfolio to see where we're going there because we haven't actually started that and it has an impact on what we're doing. So uh, from here, I could go, and this is why the value of having uh, all these relationships mapped out because from here, I could go to my uh, um, execution portfolio. So I'll go to my execution portfolio directly. And let's assume that I'm doing a uh, prioritization exercise. Um, I could go to my prioritization view. So now, again, I'm in flight collecting information, executing, and seeing what projects I'm going to be doing. So uh, going again to our Azure DevOps, I can see that. Um, you know, this is in proposed state and it's very uh, low. You know, if, if we're focusing on our top 20 projects um, here, I'm um, looking at something that's ranked 18th when I actually want to, um, you know, it's got significant benefits. I want to see if I can, um, can we actually execute uh, this initiative or maybe, you know, what's the, what's the impact of not doing it? Uh, because right now, again, it's, it's in proposed. I could come in here again after analysis and change it to active. And that can trigger, you know, actions by uh, the rest of the organization in um, in actually, you know, delivering uh, the uh, the initiative. You can see here that it's in Azure DevOps also, which means that if I wanted to open up and see 
uh, the detail behind it and Azure DevOps I can do that or um, again it's proposed so there's some uh, you know probably epic hypothesis uh, lean business case that's been done and I can actually see the information again this came from uh, Azure DevOps because it's being done in Azure DevOps so I went from a very high level to seeing something very specific that it's in, propo in a proposed state that um, you know could, ha could have an impact I could further again uh, going from again from the very top into uh, a business architecture element uh, look at you know what are the applications that it's impacting so if we don't do uh, if we continue to maintain Azure DevOps in a proposed state these are the applications that we could be impacting and we come again in that CRM uh, 3.2 that we'll get to later and then the key result the specific key results that this thing has associated which is you know achieve a product engagement score and actually create 20 customer case studies which is one of the um, key results that was associated to that objective. So we want to pay attention to this because you know this actually has a, a nice large impact on our, our objectives and also on applications. Uh, so if we again went to went to another dimension and wanted to change this, we already went through our. Um, I'll go back to my prioritization view where I have my ranking. Um, I could further um, do resource planning and um, focus only on my top 20 projects and see do I have enough resources to actually execute against my Azure DevOps. Uh, there might be some changes that I have to do in terms of either sequencing um, or uh, obtaining additional resources, moving resources around in order to be able to meet um, the uh, the actual uh, initiative. So uh, we do have the the ability to um, you know give you the resource capacity planning against that against this you know very very important item that we've identified that we have to um, we have to execute again in order to meet our uh, our objectives and key results. And similarly, we could do uh, financial scenarios. Uh, and in every one of these cases, by the way, what you what you end up doing is um, saving a scenario. Uh, so we have the ability to, you know, save scenarios uh, to define exactly what we're going to execute against um, in, um, you know, for a specific time period. So let's say it's a fourth fourth quarter execution with our prioritization. That's what we would be doing uh, within uh, within one plan, defining that scenario, saving it letting the rest of the organization know that those are going to be our priorities for, for the future. And I'm going to go into another view just for time's sake. Uh, if we get back to our uh, business architecture, enterprise architecture language, again, drilling down, we already identified that uh, we have procure to pay and um, our CRM application. So what we could do here is try to visualize, you know, where exactly that um, that sits with everything else. So procure to pay as a value stream impacts our e-payments product uh, and has these two applications associated with it. And um, we can see here that you know in the rest of the business architecture uh, is laid out for us in terms of order execution and decision support. What you could also do here is I could quick edit and see exactly, okay, within this application, again, which I might have registered directly within one plan, I can see that all of the elements and I can see everything else that is um, associated. Here we go again, our Azure DevOps uh, came up, comes up in terms of uh, an initiative that I, we might want to approve because it has such a huge impact on, you know, the rest of our uh, elements uh, within, you know, in this case, procure to pay. And I could drill drill down, uh, continue to drill down here on the application itself. And here we get to sort of the same picture that we saw before, but now more clearly showing that, okay, Azure DevOps, which actually um, is associated with our CRM application, is goes directly back to that launch our new product successfully that we um, that we identified as a priority. So we have to make sure that we do the analysis in order to get this project in, get the resources in, uh, get the funding in, so that we can make all of this 
you know, kind of a reality for us in terms of um, what we want to impact. So we have procure to pay, and we have, you know, going all the way back to the top to our uh, launch new products successfully. So um, very easy way of seeing all of the elements um, that are going to enable transformation in a common language with delivery, not losing sight of, you know, this is these are the things that we have to do um, in order to, uh, you know, achieve the objective and impact change within our, in this case, our Valley Stream. So that's um, kind of a, a summary of, of how we can get there. Now, we could do the same thing uh, within Procure to Pay. I'll go back to where I I could make changes directly here, by the way, in terms of um, you know managing um, the elements of the value stream. So uh, it, again, it's the ability to uh, establish those relationships and then go across any of uh, the elements of uh, your business architecture, enterprise architecture, in order to make decisions on um, your uh, your portfolio. So with that, uh, Jim, I would like to pass it on um, to you for closing. Hey, thanks for a great overview, Jose. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, let's go in to summarize a bit and talk about some potential next steps you can take. So, you know, in summary, it's important that we include business architecture and the technology components for a complete perspective of impact to the strategic portfolio of investments that we have. Um, incorporating enterprise architecture and business architecture as part of strategic planning and strategy execution for future state modeling is something that we need to strive for uh, in, in, to, in this modern age. And then we can begin with a simple initiative to create your enterprise repository that uh, Jose referred to with current data from your you know, IT service management system or your configuration management database, then we can iterate from there. You don't have to be done to get started. You know, The idea is to start somewhere, start simple, and then evolve it and improve it over time. You know, one plan provides a solution that incorporates all these aspects into a common hub. And it also connects to your existing applications as needed to help bring that data that you need into that hub if you already have invested time and effort into that in another location. And then one plan is definitely built for the Microsoft Cloud and provides a seamless infused user experience. So if you're in that environment and, um, and, and you use that as your technology platform, we're tailor-made for that and bringing these things together. Um, just so you know, portfolio management is our passion. It's what we do. We're not a general systems integrator. You know, we have a lot of different capabilities in the Microsoft platform. We have a lot of gold certification. But we were just again recently awarded their Project and Portfolio Management Global Partner of the Year again here in 2022. We've won it three of the last four years, and you know we get recognized because of our dedication and the innovation that we have here. And we even get kudos from the folks at Gartner and Infotech Research Group, the analysts, Scaled Agile Inc., for the things that we're doing out there in this realm. So we're not a general uh, technology firm. This is what we do. And we're here to help you. You know, we can help you just stand up the technology you want, but we're really help, here to help you and enable you to transform. We can tackle the people, process, and technology side of things. So just let us know, and we're here to help you to the degree you'd like to be helped. Now, we do webinars like this all the time, and uh, we're currently working on getting out um, our next couple that'll be done. So keep an eye out to oneplan.ai slash webinars. Uh, they should be up in the next couple of days. Um, and uh, if you don't see a live webinar that we already have up there, we have a vast library of on-demand webinars. We do these things almost weekly. And so if you see topics in there, if you like what you saw today, well, we've got a number of different things in this, in, in this domain that uh, you might find of interest. Now, you can trial one plan if you like. We have a strategic portfolio management trial, as well as some other templates out there. But if you go to AppSource on Microsoft, AppSource.com, and look up one plan, uh, highly recommend what you want to see today uh, to select the strategic portfolio management template. And please engage with us if you want. We can help you get the most out of that trial experience, and we're happy to chaperone you through that. We also offer, if you're not ready to do that, we can help you with a free roadmap workshop where we can discuss with you your current use of tools and 
assess your requirements and where you'd like to be in the future. And then we can help you best determine how you would implement or migrate into this new solution or come into bringing in together this hub and uh, provide you what we think a roadmap would look like for that. Now, because we leverage tools you already own, you may, from a total cost of ownership, already own a chunk of the components you might need to do the things that Jose showed here today. So uh, happy to engage with you and have this discussion with you uh, on a uh, complimentary basis. Now, if you're not ready for the trial or the roadmap workshop and you wanna see more, we do uh, like to engage to do personalized one-on-one -on -one demonstrations that address your specific use cases you know, hit on some of the pain points that you have and the, the, the requirements and needs that you have individually as an organization. You can reach out to us at contact at oneplan.ai to arrange that with us. If you just want to investigate us further, we're at www.oneplan.ai as well. Ultimately, I'd want to thank you all for spending time with us today. You know, our goal and our motto is that we're invested in success, and by that means we're invested in your success as a customer. Uh, you can either reach out to us at the general contact email, or if you want to talk to Jose or I individually, uh, our emails are here. You will be getting a copy of the slides as well as a link to the recording. So you'll be able to review this or share this with others. So I'd like to thank you again for being here. Um, hopefully you got some value out of this today. I know uh, we enjoy doing these and we really do hope to engage with you and meet with you in the future. Have a great day.